Oh, hello again. So you want to hear some more about my daughter Alice do you? Let me start at the beginning. When I was a student at Harvard University, I met and fell in love with a woman named Alice Hathaway Lee. It took some doing, but she soon fell in love with me as well and we were married. We were very happy together and I bought some land on Long Island intending to build a house to be called Lee Home that we would live in and raise a family. When Alice told me I was going to be a father, it was a very happy day for me. I was a New York State Assembly man at the time and was in the state capitol when I received word that my wife had given birth to a little girl. As soon as I could, I rushed home, but tragedy had struck. My brother Elliot met me at the door and said that there was curse on the house. He said our mother was dying, and worse, my beloved Alice was dying as well. As I held her in my arms, my sweet wife passed away shortly after I had arrived home. I was devastated. In my sorrow I left my daughter, whom I named for her mother, in the care of my sister Bamie and went west to be a rancher. I stayed away for three years. In the meantime the house I had planned was built and renamed Sagamore Hill. When I returned to New York, I knew my daughter needed a mother, so I courted and wed Edith Caro, a friend from my childhood. We soon got busy, and by the time I became president in 1901, Alice had four brothers, Ted, Archie, Kermit and Quentin, as well as a sister, Ethel. Sagamore Hill became a wild and rambunctious place, what with our point-to-point -point hikes, and other activities, but not nearly as wild as the White House once we moved in. Ours was a very active brood. When they were not sliding down the stairs on tea trays, my children were doing such things as walking through the halls on stilts, sneaking a pony upstairs in the White House elevator, and waiting in the fountains. I liked to join in on their games when I could, so much so that Edith once referred to me as her other little boy, Alice, although she was by that time a young woman still had her share of fun. She had her own automobile which she drove fast through the streets of Washington getting many speeding tickets. She had the Marine Band play ragtime music at her coming out party in the East Room. And that was just the tame stuff, but the American people had fallen in love with her, and named her Princess Alice. A shade of blue was named for her, and she even had songs written about her. In fact people are still falling in love with her. Just ask the guy who made this video. Anyway, Alice's popularity made her an asset to me, and she often served as my emissary at important functions such as the launching of the German Kaiser's yacht which had been built in this country, and opening the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair. Besides the United States, Alice was also popular around the world, which is why I chose her to accompany William Howard Taft on a tour of the Far East in the summer of 1905. During the trip, Alice did what she best knew how to do, namely make headlines in the newspapers. As I mentioned, she went swimming in a pool with all her clothes on, and even got a congressman to jump in with her. She danced the hula in Hawaii, got drunk on sake at a reception in Japan, and even smoked opium with the Empress of China. I didn't approve of some of her antics, but could do nothing about it since she was so far away, trusting my friend Bill Taft to keep an eye on her. But when the president of the railroad she was riding on across the country during her return home decided to set a speed record, that is when I stepped in, I sent an executive order that the train be slowed to a more sensible speed before it and my daughter ended up scattered across the landscape, marriage did little to tame Alice. She became active in politics, campaigning for both me and her husband, and she also developed a biting wit concerning those in the political arena. In the mid-1920s she had a child by a man other than her husband, and continued as a Washington fixture until she died as an old woman of 96. In her home was a pillow stitched with her motto, If you don't have anything nice to say about someone, come sit by me. Well, it was nice talking with you. I think I will go and give some pointers to Newt Gingrich and the other Republican candidates running for election this year. Goodbye.